All right, hey guys, uh, Yifang here. Uh, I've been wanting to make some videos about mice and tech and just anything for quite a while now, but never got the time to do it. So now I've decided I'm just gonna record this as if I was doing a stream and quality's bad, but I don't have the equipment to make it better. So bear with me. Uh, today, I am going to talk a bit about mice, right? That's what this is about. So unlike giving mouse reviews, I'm gonna tell you guys what I, my theories behind mice themselves. Uh, which is like, we can talk a bit about shape, grip, sensor, and mouse skates, weight, like everything to do with mice um, that you should know about and therefore help you make better buying decisions in the future and knowing what you want to look for in a mouse. So I'll start with the first one, uh, shape, which is by far what I think is probably one of the most important factors. So as you guys see, you are looking at three different mice here that I have on me at this exact moment. My super lights at work, so it's not in this video. Um, this is a Viper V2, this is a Starlight 12, a medium, and this is a Lamzo Atlantis. So this is my new current main. Uh, I switched off from the Starlight 12 before. <coughs> so when it comes to shape, right? Um, shape and your grip come hand in hand with each other. So there's many things you have to consider in this case. Uh, I, well, your own preferred type of grip, um, the hand size you have, and therefore the mouse size also matters. Now. The main thing about grips is that, well, there are three types of grips, right? You have your claw, your palm, and your fingertip. Now, some people will also use a hybrid claw. Um, I think I'm sort of like hybrid claw slash claw as well. Uh, you also have, but I used to be a palm gripper. So obviously for fingertip users, you will want a very, very small mouse, right? Ideally a small flatter mouse. So in this case, uh, I would say something like a Starlight 12. Right, now the reason behind that is because with the fingertip, uh, you are moving your mouse primarily using your fingers. Um, a lot of people don't actually have contact on the back of their palm, like there's no contact, it's purely like this, where the mouse has no contact at the back and it's caught finger movement. So with fingertip grip, uh, what I think it's good for is for constant movement, right? If you're playing games like fast paced games, Apex Legends, Overwatch, um, Fortnite, whatever, you're always doing this, you're tracking, you're moving, you're doing anything, right? So if you were to palm that mouse, every time you wanted to do this, you're like swinging your whole arm. Whereas with a fingertip, uh, when you need to do those, you you move your wrist, you, move, you can move things using your fingers. Like see, in this case, I'm not moving my wrist, I'm just using my fingers to move the mouse around. And this gives you a lot more flexibility and movement in those situations where you gotta constantly do things. Because if you do this with your hands, right? You do this, you can do a lot of different micro movements and stuff using your fingers. Whereas if you were to grip the whole mouse using like a palm or something, you can't do that, right? You have to move the entire mouse in that case. And that involves a lot more movement. So and therefore in the fast paced games, that becomes a lot harder because you're like trying to swing your arm multiple ways and so on. Uh, the downside of the fingertip grip though, is that you have less stability because it's like, oh, you, you try to do a flick, but then all of a sudden you're like, oh, what if I let go of the mouse a bit or I do this, but like, you know, that millimeter difference between tensing your fingers also matters. Um, stability comes from pushing down on the mouse using your palm, which is why therefore the palm grippers will have the most stability uh, because first of all, it's very difficult for them to move the mouse to begin with. So stability is a big factor. And second of all, um, yeah, by pushing down on it to begin with, you know, you can push the mouse into the mouse pad and therefore give that extra stability to the mouse. And this is also why I think claw grip therefore becomes the um, superior grip compared to both of them. I think it's the most ideal grip or works for most things because with a claw grip, um, your palm kind of on the back has contact to push down on a mouse, but your fingers are clawed together. If you think about it this way, right? By having your fingers ready to push down like this versus when you use a palm grip and your fingers like stretched out, um, it's a lot faster to click like this than it is to try click down using that. Um, and even these like minor differences make a big, can reflect a big difference in the game. Now, obviously the other thing is with your palm on the back from claw, you have that stability. And then with the front of your fingers curled up, you still get that finger movement from touching the mouse like this, and you can do that rotation. But the thing is by holding it down from the front, you only move the front of the mouse. So this gives you your micro adjustments and this gives you your big, uh, big movements that don't lose any stability on that. Uh, which is why I think claw grip is therefore the superior grip because you can do everything on it. Now, how does this reflect into shape? Well, 
with any flatter mice, both of these two mice are much flatter than this one, right? With the flatter mice, you don't really get that back support. So you're naturally forced into this like more fingertippy slash you could try claw on these. It's not to say these can't be clawed, but like for my hand size, at least these are far too small for that. And it, it's not the most comfortable. Um, I still have a lack of stability in that. So whereas if you come to something like the Atlantis or XM1, XM1R, Pulsar X2, whatever, these mice are designed for claw grip, which means that the hump is really far back. And by push, therefore you get the feeling that it's in your palm. And therefore the mouse also slopes really far forward. Uh, if you look at this comparison, I don't know if it shows really well, right? But there's a really big hump on the back here. And then the mouse slopes really hard on the front. Whereas over here for the Starlight 12, you know, it's like the hump's sort of in the middle. It kind of slopes down, but the front doesn't really roll off either. Um, giving it no arch. Because if you think about your fingers, right? Having your fingers being further down versus further up. Because over here, this is lower than over here, where I would be pressing down instead. And therefore my fingers are extended more and the mouse is more back in my hand. To reach that same thing, my hand would go much more forward and therefore I don't actually get as much palm support. Uh, essentially, I just think that the more front, the more slope that the front of the mouse is, uh, the more you actually end up being able to fingertip it uh, in the front because your hands get into this pinching motion, right? Your fingers are curled up, it's pinching the front of the mouse. So you can move just the front of the mouse to do micro adjustments. Whereas because the back is humped enough, you get that sort of stability. So your rotations, the back doesn't rotate and you move the tip of the mouse. So this gives you little micro adjustments. While if you do a big flick, your back is giving it support. So it still holds down. Whereas on this, yes, you can do micro adjustments super easy because the mouse is um, flatter on the back. So there's not as much support. But as a result, if you were to do a big movement, sometimes it might fly away. Um, a solution to that, to an extent, is to make mice like the super, uh, like the uh, V2 here, because the V2 is also a really, really flat mouse, similar to the Starlight 12, but it's much longer. So comparison doesn't really show as much, but I'm sure if you guys pick one up or look at Elo shapes, um, it will tell you, it will show you that the Viper is a much longer version of a mouse, but it's still flat, right? Now that kind of solves the problem because if you extend it, like your hand is only so big, if you were to curl it up right, or you extend it out wide or whatever you do, there's only so much of your hand. So if they drag it out wider, longer, then obviously your hand is gonna be lower and flatter instead of curled up like this, then the mouse will be super high. Uh, as you extend your hand out and out, um, the mouse gets longer and longer, then that works. So in this case, uh, the Viper V2 is actually a really good fit for me as well for claw gripping, even though it's flatter because it's got uh, it's elongated and therefore I still have that back support. My finger, my hand is just more relaxed instead of more like gripped up like I would be on the Atlantis. So this is definitely a more aggressive grip rather than this is a lot more relaxed. Um, I still personally do prefer this, right? But that's for hump and length. Uh, the front of the mouse is also important. So on the uh, Atlantis, the back is wide, as you can see here, maybe along this side, it's a bit wider and then the mouse gets narrower as it goes forward. Now that's also important because if the mouse was to not, uh, if, if the mouse um, extends outwards, it flares outwards as it goes wider, your hand becomes stretched as you are trying to grip it in the front. And therefore that makes um, the mouse really hard to micro adjust as well, which is one thing that the Superlight does, which I hate, right? So on this, because the, the back is wide and it's humped up, that's good, you get your palm support, the front is narrow, so you can get your pinching motion and therefore your fingers have uh, room to move around in because your fingers get better grip for something narrow, right? You're obviously going to be able to do a lot more something na like narrow with your fingers versus if you were to hold a wide part. So therefore, wider back, bigger hump, narrower and sloped front makes ideal claw grip, which is what the Atlantis and mice like the Pulsar X2 and XM1, XM1 shaped stuff do. That's why it was such a good shape because it fits perfectly for that claw grip. Now, the Viper here, uh, it kind of does okay on that aspect as well. Uh, so does the Starlight 12. So none of these actually do too bad in that sense, but that's just something you want to uh, take note of, is that if you are trying to find a claw grip mouse, make sure the sides are either flat or curling inwards as it goes forward rather than uh, flaring out. So the Superlight actually does that terribly. The Superlight has a curve at the center of the mouse around here, and around here, but uh, not so much in the front. I don't know why the front of the Superlight ends up going wider. 
So that's something you guys should note. Now, obviously for um, your light, uh, your fingertip type gripper, uh, if the mouse was to be really big humped at the back, um, you aren't gonna be able to fingertip that because that's automatically going to enter your hand in your palm and so on. So fingertip rows, you guys want a smaller mouse, you want a flatter mouse, and therefore you only need to do this kind of movement. Um, yeah. So the other thing this has to do with is also the type of uh, uh, the type of uh, game and sensitivity you play on. So with fingertip grippers, if you guys were to play a low sense and you're constantly doing this, it's not going to feel good. So fingertip grippers usually will end up having to play a relatively higher sense where all you got to do sort of is within this motion and your fingers can do everything. Because if you have to keep swiping, you're going to feel that lack of stability and you might as well go end up using a claw or palm grip. Meanwhile, the palm and claw grippers, therefore, to an extent, might like lower sensitivities as well because they can do these big movements since they have that added stability, but therefore the lower um, the lower sensitivity and the micro adjustments gives them more time to, uh, uh, more ability to micro control and be precise. Now, another important thing that isn't really talked about by most mouse reviewers actually is uh, the sensor placement itself. So people will tell you that, oh, this uses a certain, certain sensor, you know, the uh, Atlantis here uses a 3395 pix um, from PixArt. The Viper uses the Razer sensor, whatever. And I forgot what the Spinal Mouse uses, but um, they don't tell you about the placement itself. So I think all mice these days do sensors really well. Um, there is obviously DPI deviation between different models and sensors and whatever, but in general, everything's accurate. You're not really gonna get sensor problems. Um, I haven't run into a sensor problem in any mouse I've ever owned. So maybe I'm fortunate, maybe you know, I, I don't believe that sensor problems happen that easily. But I think the important thing is where the sensor is itself. So if you look at the Atlantis, this is what I mean by it. Like the location of the sensor, whether it's in the middle here, it's more forward or more further back and so on, also matter. Because if I'm holding a mouse like this and I'm doing claw grip, right? And I'm doing a lot of adjustments just by using the front of the mouse and the sensor was placed really far forward, then any movement I do is going to reflect a big change. Whereas on the flip side, if the mouse sensor was really far back and I moved just the front, the mouse isn't really going to move equivalent to how much I'm trying to make it move when I'm moving my hand. Because you expect, oh, my hand moves this much and the mouse moves that much. But in reality, uh, that changes because you're moving the front of the mouse versus you're moving the back of the mouse compared to where the placement of the sensor actually is. So that's one thing I noticed, especially on the Starlight 12. Uh, when I first switched to this mouse, um, the sensor placement was really bad. Uh, most mice I've ever used all had pretty good sensor placement. I never had that issue until I went to this mouse. I got used to it. Doesn't mean I like it. Uh, essentially what happened is like, I would move it like this and I'm like, why is my mouse, I'm moving it just horizontally, but why is the cross here or the cursor in my screen moving slightly upwards and to the right or slightly downwards and to the left when I'm just trying to move it left and right horizontally. Whereas I don't get that issue on the other mice. And that really comes down to the placement of the sensor itself that this is far too centered and back for the way I was gripping it because I was moving the front of the mouse, but the sensor was way too far back for that. Um, generally speaking, most mice have pretty decent sensor placement, but that is also one aspect that you should note based on you know where do you hold the mouse and do you think that is going to influence you? Because you don't wanna be like, oh, I moved it to the right, I was gonna click on his head, but because it moved to the right and it went downwards as well, I stopped shooting heads, I shot the body instead. Um, that's one thing that could happen. But otherwise, sensors themselves, uh, not a lot of problem there. I think all sensors are pretty good and you guys don't really need to worry about that. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is skates. So people say, oh, the stock, are, uh, the stock skates are pretty good, the skate's good, the skate's bad, whatever. But what they don't tell you is they don't tell you how skates actually matter. So in this case, you see the Atlantis, one in the back, one in the middle, one in the front, the, uh, what do you call it, Starlight 12 here, four small corners. Um, the modded Viper I have here as well. This is mirrored, mirroring the um, placement of what stock skates would be. I think these are core pads on it, which is also front, middle, and back. If you then go look at a, like a super light and the underneath of that, uh, there's really, really big skate areas. Now, you get this placebo effect that when you have super large skate area, it's like, wow, the mouse is, it feels so glidey and fast and so on, right? But keep in mind that is placebo the mouse cannot be fast. The mouse is just smooth. Um, because basic science will tell you that the more contact area you have between the mouse, which is where your mouse feet are, the uh, more friction there is, right? That's just how science works. Now, therefore, 
if you were to use big skate area, you have more friction, like the super light, um, which then by default is going to be slower to move than any of these other mice that have much smaller skate area. But the placebo effect you get is that because it's large and it's smoothed out and you know you don't feel anything on the mouse pad, it feels fast and glidey, but that speed is not speed, it's just smoothness and glidiness. It's not actually going to be uh, faster. So if anything, that is going to be a lot harder to micro adjust because to actually move the mouse takes more force than if you were to actually move this mouse, not even because of weight, because if they weighed the same weight, this would still be easier to move because it has less skate area, therefore less contact friction. Now, obviously the force of the mouse uh, relative to skate area also matters, but just in general, just understand it as the bigger the skate area, it's actually going to be harder and slower to move, but it feels like it's faster because it's smoother, right? That's placebo. Raw speed is going to be slower. It's going to be harder to move. It feels smoother though, uh, which means the flip side is also true for this, that this mouse is actually super easy to, to start like moving by accident or whatever, but you really feel the texture of the mouse pad. It feels bumpy and everything. You can feel everything because there's not as much um, area for it to dampen and smoothen out. Uh, and therefore you, yeah. So you might actually like that or you might not like that depending on the mouse pad you're using um, because you can feel the texture or if it's not really a textured mouse pad, you don't feel the texture. Um, personally, I used to like really big skate areas uh, because that smoothness was nice. But the more I played games like Valorant where it's micro adjustments and quick precision little flicks, I liked smaller areas, but I still had the problem on the Starlight 12 where it was just too small. Uh, so I think something like the Atlantis gave me a perfect size, or I still also think like Viper had perfect size as well. I'm not really a fan of these like four small corner types, nor am I a fan of those like super big ones that um, Zowie used to do. And well, the style of the Superlight also has. Um, another thing to note is if you guys do use Artisan mouse pads as well, uh, and you like to push down the mouse to stop, because like if I was to flick and like, oh, I don't have that palm stability right, I'm pushing really hard on the mouse into the mouse pad to try stop it. Now, when I was using a soft artisan mouse pad with this mouse, when I did that, because the skates were so small, right? The pressure I was putting onto the mouse meant the mouse dug into, uh, into the mouse pad more. Now also, once again, basic physics, uh, the less area, the more pressure. So that because this was only these four little corners, this mouse was actually going super deep into the mouse pad from the force I was putting on it. And therefore the skates, uh, would go so deep in that the bottom plate itself would sometimes be scratching against the mouse pad. Now that was one thing I really had a problem with when I first switched to this mouse because one, it was too light. So I had to push really deep to try stop it. I was having stability issues. And then every time I started scratching the base plate. Um, so my solution to that was, well, uh, one thing was adjusting to not press down so hard. The other thing was getting slightly thicker skates or more rounded skates, which I put core pads on on this. And also eventually I switched from an artisan soft to this artisan mid which is much harder and less thick, so it doesn't push down as much. Um, but yeah, that's another thing about uh, skates to note, is that how do you care about the area of the skates and so on? Um, generally speaking though, most mice these days do skates pretty well and it's probably a lesser concern, but just note that if you do have a more textured mouse pad like this uh, Hayate Aotsu, uh, if you use these small skates, you can actually feel the mouse pad like down below you a bit more, it's really textured. Whereas if you use the bigger, uh, bigger skates, you don't feel the mouse pad as much. Now, another thing we're gonna talk about is weight. So obviously weight in itself is important, um, but I do believe, I'm, I believe that there is a point where it gets too light. Um, what that point is will change between people. Uh, for example, like if, if I lift 20 kgs at the gym and you lift 10 kgs at the gym, uh, I'm gonna find a certain mouse perfect and you're going to find probably a lighter mouse perfect so everyone's bodies are different their builds are different their strength is different that matters um, the games you play matter because on certain lighter mice you really do struggle on tactical shooters for stability but those mice will be really good for fast-paced games where you're constantly aiming and so on so it's just important to note that you can get to a point where it's too light but it also depends on the game you're playing and generally if you are playing those fast-paced games i don't think the weight like you do want a bit lighter even at the sacrifice of stability to a certain extent, because that's gonna help you more often than having that added stability is going to help you. Now, weight distribution is another thing. So take this modded Viper, for example, right? This weighs two grams more than the Starlight 12, but because this mouse is much bigger, the weight is more spread out. So when I pick it up, it actually feels a lot um, lighter than the Starlight 12. 
even though they pretty much weigh the same. And if anything, the side 12 is lighter, but it doesn't feel that way because of distribution, which is the same logic as uh, the smaller skate area is actually faster, but it doesn't necessarily feel that way. So good weight distribution is also important because if your mouse has poor weight distribution, um, your movements are also gonna be difficult. If a lot of the weight is centered towards the back, then you're gonna have a super easy time moving front, but your back is always gonna be kind of weird. Versus the same logic, if you have a lot of weight towards the front of the mouse and you try to do micro adjustments, you're gonna struggle. And then every time you flick, you're like, oh shit, the mouse is flying away because you have no weight on the back to hold it down. So most mice now as well um, do that pretty well, uh, but I haven't tried all of them. I can tell you though that the Atlantis has a really good weight distribution. The Viper also has really good weight distribution. Um, the Superlight from Logitech is also really well distributed in terms of weight. And the Starlight 12, uh, it's a little bit more back heavy, but it's also like an acceptable level of weight distribution. Uh, however, the weight distribution does fall behind the other three I mentioned. Now, the last thing is, um, well, not the last thing, but mouse pad combination auto also matters. Um, like I said, it has to do with your skates and how hard you push down onto the mouse it has to do with the design of the skates and what you're trying to accomplish with the mouse pad. And lastly, uh, we talk about wireless technology. So that also is directly related to the sensor itself. Um, I think wireless technology in itself is probably the least important thing you should consider. Not to say things like now where they have hyper polling from Razer and other companies are doing it too, where they go to like up to 4,000, 8,000 polling hertz. Um, that's amazing. It feels super nice and responsive and so on. But that's only uh, relevant as your computer itself keeps up in terms of your frames per second in the game and your monitor refresh rate. But in general, like 1000 onwards, it really is probably the least important factor compared to shape, sensor placement, weight distribution, and like every other part of the mouse before it comes to the sensor. But yeah, so most sensors are doing really good. Um, also, the wireless tech in itself is really good. There's not a lot of latency issues between mice anymore. So I'm sure any mouse you guys are interested in, you can find some reviews everywhere. Look at Boardsy, look at whoever. Um, they'll tell you all about it. But in general, so wireless tech itself, don't put too much priority on that. Um, it's nice to have those, but that should be the least of your concerns when you are deciding your choice because the other factors are going to influence how you play in the game a lot more. You know, that, that stability thing for me was really important because as soon as I switched to this, I was like, oh, I'm more confident swinging those corners because I just never thought, you know, when I was using the size 12, I would swing certain tight angles and I'll be like, oh, but what if I can't stop it? What if I over flick and so on, right? That never happened with this. I just got an instant confidence boost because when you play the game, you don't think about it as much. It's just a feeling, right? You're in the zone. And when you're in the zone with the right mouse, you get all the confidence you need. Whereas on the other mice, it's always like, oh, but I whiffed that. Like you were confident in it, but you whiffed it. On the right mouse, you're confident in it and you don't whiff those. So yeah, um, that's my 20 minute video on mice explanation. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna trim this or if I'm gonna raw upload and if I'm gonna add any timestamps and so on. But if you guys find this, I'll probably add some timestamps. But if you have found this uh, useful, um, like sub, do whatever. And hopefully I'll get around to actually having a time where I can be bothered reviewing these mice. And that'll probably come in this exact same form where I'm just gonna talk, I'm just gonna film. There's gonna be literally no editing or whatever because I don't have the ability to do that. Um, unless someone out there wants to do editing for me. Um, also check out the website called Elo Shapes. Um, you can just Google search that. It will give you a comparison of all mice and you'll see exactly what I mean by certain mice flaring out in the front or the back or flat. Um, the height of different mice, whether the hump is more back or more forward, and so on. But yeah, um, good website, check it out. Like, sub, share to your friends. And if this does well, I will keep talking about like anything um, as long as you guys are interested. And hopefully you guys stop buying the wrong thing and then hating it and then being like, oh, but I sh what could I buy instead? Ask me, right? Please ask me. I will help you. Thanks.